I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Donna Spencer, and she is going to be making plantable, plantiful fare with an Italian flair. Please welcome her to the show. That's a mouthful. Very creative, though. How are you, Donna? Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yes. My husband is the marketing genius, and he came up with that catchphrase, so I, I love it. I'm doing great. How are you? That's great. Well, it's so nice to meet you. I'm meeting you for the first time. You are a contributor to this year's 2024 Vegan Health Bundle. So I'd love for people to know a little bit about you when you became vegan or plant-based, why, and what you have contributed to the bundle. Sure. So in 2005, my husband and I moved our little family of two boys down to the Houston area. And I had been in corporate America and worked for Kodak forever and I joined HP. So fast forward 10 years, you know, I've always had high blood pressure and I'm just want to make sure things don't boil over. I've always had high blood pressure and high cholesterol, but I never really paid too much attention to it. I was busy raising boys and working on projects at work. So I had a coworker that I became close to. And I noticed one day that he was eating a lot of raw food and a lot of um, plant-based food. And I said, you know, I haven't been feeling very good. I, I see that what you're eating and that opened the door for him to tell me about Dr. Usselstein and reverse reversing heart disease. And I said, you know, I have a really big history with it. And he's like, well, you got to buy this book. So in 2015, you're not going to believe this 2015, I bought the book and it sat on my shelf for, th for four more years. Wow. I, read, I loved it, but I wasn't there yet. I was too busy raising boys, too busy with a traveling husband. Um, so then in 2019, my health hit an all-time low. And I pulled out the book again, and I started listening to podcasts. And I said, okay, 2019, I've got to commit to doing this. So in 2019, I fully committed to no meat, no dairy. Um, I cut out the gluten. I healed a lot of autoimmune issues that I was having. I repaired my thyroid. But I, I am sad to say I'm still battling with high blood pressure and cholesterol. And I actually just... Um, signed up with Dr. Khan about eight months ago, Dr. Joel Khan, about eight months ago, and he's been doing wonders for me and trying to get everything down. So that's basically my story. It's not un it's not unfamiliar. I'm sure a lot of our viewers will under will will resonate with the fact that you just don't feel good. And one more pill, one more doctor's visit, one more biopsy on your thyroid doesn't seem to do any good. And I just I had to fully commit to just eating better and living better. And so that's what I'm doing here today. And because of all that, I got really super interested in how does this all work? I'm um, a project manager by nature and I'm very analytical and I had to know what was going on. So I took the certifications at Cornell and I just started my journey from that point. And I wanted to reinvent the things that I had been used to cooking. I didn't want to give up my Italian heritage and the lasagna and the meatballs and the chicken parm. I could eat eggplant parm, but you can only eat that so many times a week, right? Yes. So, and I couldn't do cheese anymore. So I just slowly but surely over the last four years have really completely reinvented the way I, I cook. Um, so what I'm here to say is that you don't have to give up your heritage to eat plant-based. You can reinvent it. And to my surprise and my delight, I found a lot of other recipes in my Italian cuisine that were already plant-based. I didn't have to give up anything. I just kind of like shifted what I was eating and I could still have all the flavors that I was used to. So that's pretty much it. That's where I, how I got to where I am today. Um, I brought my passion as an HP employee to the employees there. And I started cooking classes on, on campus with our nutrition, our nutritionist that we have there. And we did that for three years. So, um, and then I became a food for life instructor. So I've been doing this for a little, a little while. Um, so yeah, so today, Chef AJ, I wanted to share with you guys some of the recipes of the other participants in the bundle, some other great chefs. So I made a couple of recipes. If I could show those first, I thought that we- That would be fantastic. I'm just curious, did your family join you in your journey of healthy eating? Um, they did not join me 100% completely, but they eat everything that I put out in front of them, whether it's at a party or a dinner. Um, my husband does eat a little bit of fish 
but he eats half his plate or three fourths of his plate is what I eat. And then a, a fourth of his plate is a small portion of fish or a lean meat. Um, but yeah, they're, they've been incredibly supportive and they've been my taste testers and they're brutally honest. Mm. So yeah, yeah, they've been uh, amazing. Um, and they'll, they'll eat anything really that I put out. I'm gonna just tilt my camera down um, so you guys can see, let's make sure I got the, I'm gonna put myself up here. There we go. I just wanna make sure I get this angled right for you guys. Um, I wanna show you, um, I have been following Sweet Debbie um, for a long time and I made her salted caramel covered um, apple bars. And I gotta tell you, these are amazing. I didn't realize, I've been looking for, like, there we go, there we go. I've been looking for a caramel sauce recipe um, and this recipe, she has this caramel sauce in there that is so simple. It's maple syrup and some um, uh, sunflower seed um, butter, but I actually made it with peanut butter because that's what I had. Um, I had some natural peanut butter on my shelf, but um, this is, these are amazing. So I hope you guys will go in, find that in the bundle. Her bundle is called Spring Plant Based Meal Plan, and they're the moistest oatmeal bar I have ever made. And this is definitely going to be something that I repeat time and time again. So I wanted to share that with you. And then I also made um, some lemon bars. Lauren Burnett, she is actually the reason why I am here today. And I just want to dust these with some, um, a little bit of powdered sugar because it'll just make it look a little prettier before I share these with, before I show these off. But she has a, an amazing lemon bar recipe. And this is made with silk and tofu. Oh, those and are beautiful. They're so good. It's a gluten-free crust. I don't think I baked the crust long enough, but it tastes really good. It's an um, almond, almond flour crust with some brown rice flour in it. And these are amazing. So I hope you guys will... Check out Lauren's um, contribution. It, hers is called Plant-Based Holiday Classics, and this is under her spring section. So I hope you guys will take a, an opportunity, take a take chance, or um, opportunity to... to um... You do a beautiful job executing other people's recipes. Are you a very seasoned chef or cook? I am a very seasoned cook. I have loved to cook forever. And I think it's actually how I won my husband's heart 35 years ago. <laughs> I made an apple pie and brought it over to his apartment. And my, my mother said to me, you must really like this guy because you're making him an apple pie. So I've always loved to cook and I feel like I kind of missed my calling a little bit, but my career as an IT project manager has served me well. And um, I'm really happy that I did that, but I would have loved to have been a chef. So never too late. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it, but this is, this is wonderful. This is, I love doing this and um, this satisfies my little itch for right now. So I have two recipes for you guys. Um, the first one is really, really quick. It's an Italian artichoke casserole and this, I love artichokes, but I don't like peeling them. So, and you know what, I'm gonna do something real quick. I have my, um, my pasta is done for the next recipe. I just wanna check my time here. And um, so I'm just gonna move that up and I'm gonna move this on the front here so, you, so I can turn my camera down and do this artichoke um, casserole for you. Move my camera down a little bit, okay. I think you guys can see that. So I have a, um, a bowl here and what I'm gonna do, this artichoke casserole is, um, I'm making it with frozen artichokes. And the thing that I love about this is that I'm using cashews. And and if you don't, if you can't do the cashews, um, try the silken tofu or some tofu because that probably will work just as well. But basically I take some frozen, 
um, artichoke hearts and I defrost them. And I throw those in a bowl and then I make this bechamel out of cashews and lemon juice, some low sodium vegetable broth, um, some brown pepper and some garlic granulars. And I just blend it up. You have to soak the cashews. I usually throw my cashews in some water and then pop them in the microwave for three or four minutes and they're soft. Otherwise you can soak them overnight if you'd like. So I've got my um, artichokes in here. I'm gonna throw in some of my bechamel. And then I have some vegan Parmesan cheese. This recipe is in a, the last section of my, um, of my cookbook there. Um, it has cashews in it, nutritional yeast, some ground mustard, which a lot of other recipes don't include the ground mustard. And I think that the adding that ground mustard just gives it a layer of complexity. And you wonder, what is that little bit of a tang? Where, where is that coming from? And it's the ground ginger. I, I'm sorry, ground mustard seed. Um, and then what else is in here? I think some garlic powder. So you put in your vegan Parmesan cheese and you mix that all together. Put that back over here. I've got this adorable little baking dish here. It's really, really small. And then you just spread it in your baking dish, right? I mean, this can be a side. It can be a, um, a, a main entree. Whoops, I need my spoon, my, my spatula. So I just spread that out, right? And then I've got some breadcrumbs and some, um, some breadcrumbs and parsley, dried parsley. I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit. And that just gets spread over the top. And then you bake that for 350 until it's bubbly because it's really pretty much already cooked. So all you really need to do is heat it through and toast the breadcrumbs. And through the magic of having this all ready for you, this is what it looks like when it's baked. Um, so you just, you know, scoop out a bunch and it really, it's really creamy. I don't know if I'm gonna try to do this really good for you. So it's really creamy. It's, um, I like to use a lot of sauce. So I put in extra sauce actually on mine and I love the breadcrumbs toasted. So sometimes if they don't come out toasted enough, just under the regular oven at, you know, 350, I'll just turn on the broiler and just crisp those up a little bit if I was having company over, but I'm just having this for lunch. So I'm not gonna worry too much about crisping up. They're already crispy, but I'm not gonna worry about making them a little bit browner. But um, yeah, so this is a really great side dish. It's a really great entree. And what I love about res these recipes is that most of the time the recipes that I've created, you can use them a second time during the week to, to recreate another meal. So what I would do is I would add some more bechamel, some more um, uh, broth and add pasta to this. And I would have a whole nother meal during the week, so. Just wanted to share that. Any questions so far? Well, let me look. I, I love, I mean, it looks so creamy. It is. It's really super creamy. And that's one of the things that I, I, I missed about when I first went uh, vegan is that I couldn't figure out how to get things creamy again. And really the silken tofu and the cashew cream, those were game changers for me. Um, and I just... You know, I try to minimize the nuts. So if I have this today, I will not eat nuts for like the next couple of days because that's just me. Um, but I buy silk and tofu like there's no tomorrow. Um, and it was funny to me that during the pandemic, you couldn't get tofu, right? The shelves were bare. And I'm like, everyone's, you know, everyone's figured it out. Oh, my gosh. What am I going to do? So, yeah, it's really, really creamy. It's really delicious. That is so cool. What do you eat in a day, Donna? On a oh, diet? Oh my gosh. I, I'm like a hungry girl. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I usually start with like, um, those oatmeal bars are very typical for me in the morning. I just like to get up and I'm a, I'm a carb fanatic. So I usually will do a, something like that. I love to make my own bagels and Sometimes I do them gluten-free, sometimes I don't, but I try to do them with sourdough. I'm gonna get, we got about 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna get going while I'm talking. 
We had a show yesterday from the bundle with Sandra Cota where she actually made a gluten-free vegan bagel. I, I missed that episode. I was so disappointed. I was like, they waiting. Look so waiting. They look real. They look re just like a bagel. Oh, I have been trying. I have been trying so hard to make um, rosemary bagels. Um, and I, I started and stopped that recipe three or four times in the last three months. So I was really hoping to watch her episode. And I got to go back and watch, watch it as a replay. So while I'm talking, um, I'll come back to what I eat in a day. Um, but I want to get started on the reason why, the main reason why I wanted, uh, what recipe I wanted to share with you, which, which is, uh, and I hope I pronounce this correctly, okieta with broccoli and mushrooms. So this pasta isn't something that a lot of people are familiar with. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my camera down again if that's okay because because I want to show you some a few things here. I'm heating up. The first thing is I don't know if a lot of people know this, and I learned this through the Ruby Cooking School um, that I took for plant based cooking. Um, when you're heating up the pan, one of the tricks to not using oil, and this was an this was like another game changer for me was heating your pan, actually having a good pan was number one. Uh, number two was heating your pan to a point where when you throw some water on it, the water beads up like mercury balls. Mm -hmm. Then you know that your pan is hot enough to put in whatever it is you're gonna saute and it won't stick. That was a crazy, crazy game changer for me. But anyway, back to the pasta. So there's these um, arcachia, um, they, it's actually translates into small ear and I love these because they have these little pockets and you can, the sauce just gets inside of it and it's just so delicious. I, sometimes with penny, I don't like penny and rigat rigatoni as much as I do these because the sauce gets in the center and sometimes when you bite down, it squirts out. It makes me a little crazy. So I love these kinds of pastas where they have a little indentation in them so that the sauce can hide in them. And then you get that, you know, you get that feel in your mouth, which I, I just like that. So let's just see. So that's not ready yet because they're not, they're not beating up. Um, so in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to chop up, um, I'm going to get a different cut. Oh, let's see. I'm going to cut up my, um, Mushrooms. Oh, there's my cutting boards right there. What I already did too was I um I've already cut up my onions and my garlic and I got my spices all set to go. Um, but I already did some broccoli. So broccolini. I don't know if a lot of people have used broccolini before. You know, the only time that I really had broccoli, and I I hope my my niece is watching because she actually helped me pick out Tracy actually helped me pick out this recipe. Um, so she said, oh, I remember broccoli. Nana used to make it when, on Christmas Eve. So the only time my family really had broccoli was Christmas Eve. That's when, funny. My mom, when my mom would make it with pasta for Christmas because you couldn't eat meat on Christmas Eve. So it's so funny. And now, I mean, broccoli, I, that's one of the things I probably eat broccoli almost every day. That's one thing that I eat. And I, I'll roast it, I'll saute it, I'll um, blacken it just in a skillet. I'll just um, brown or just you know throw the throw the florets in there and just toast them if, as if you were toasting a seed. Um, so yeah, broccolini. This is a, and I find that this broccoli, bro, this the baby broccoli. It's also broccolette, broccolini, baby broccoli. You can eat the leaves on it. You can eat the stems. It's much more tender than traditional broccoli crowns and it cooks a lot faster. So that's what I want to say about broccoli. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is I want to see, let's see if my, is it almost, you can see the little, I'm going to do that again for you so you can see. I love that. I love the sound. I know. Isn't that wonderful? Um, so I'm going to let that get a little bit hotter while I'm just dicing up some, some mushrooms over here. Hopefully you can, I'm going to turn this a little bit there. There we go. So I'm just going to roughly chop the mushroom because I, 
not very particular. I mean, I'm the one eating this. So if I was serving this for company, I would take my time and I would do a pre really pretty chop on it, but um, I'm not gonna do that today for you guys because I wanna make sure that you see this to the end. And I've got 10 minutes left. I'm watching the clock. Okay, it's a thank you for being mindful. That's fine. <laughs> Doing a great job. It's the project manager in me. I can't, <laughs> help. can't help it. Um, so anyway, I for lunch, so usually after I don't eat breakfast until after I get back from working out, which is around 11 o'clock. So sometimes I think I'm ready for that. I think. I'm going to do that one more time so you guys can see the balls. So you can see they're done dancing around there. And it's only beeping because I took the pan off of the cooktop here. So I'm going to throw in my, this is super, super easy. I already cooked my pasta. You can see it's over there. And I cooked it in a little bit of water so that I could have nice starchy water for my sauce. So I've got my onions in here. I'm going to throw in my mushrooms. And I've already pre-microwaved my broccolini. It's, it's pretty much all it needs to do is to be reheated. And that's what makes this recipe so quick to do is if you do this a little ahead of time, you know, really, I can put this on the table in about 20 minutes. Um, so I get home from working out and I'll have like a, a breakfast bar or I'll have leftovers from the night before, which is always, you know, a stir fry or I love to experiment and I don't like to eat the same thing every night. So I'm all, I always have a ton of leftovers in my refrigerator. Um, so I'll do like a stir fry or a, a bowl, a rice bowl. Um, so like I'll roast a bunch of vegetables on a Sunday and I'll just put them in containers so that I can just mix up a, a bowl with some maybe forbidden rice, black rice, um, so you can see that this is sticking because my, my pan was heated to the right temperature. Makes a difference. Yeah. Do you have a special cookware you like and recommend? I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm really frugal. So I have Cuisinat. Yeah. Cuisinat. Um, and then I do have a really nice pieces of, uh, high end, but they're, they're always Christmas presents. It's nothing that I've really bought for myself because I'm too um, frugal. Rims is saying she was looking at your book yesterday and her husband was so excited to try your recipes. Aw, thank you. That's, that's the best. That makes me so happy. Um, yeah, every time I, I sit down with my husband at dinner and he's like, what do you, what'd you make, what'd you make? He's always eating off my plate. I'm like, it's your own plate. I'm a hungry girl. I need to eat this. So, so you can see how nicely, and again, it's not sticky. I'm so excited. So I'm, what I would do then is I would throw my broccoli in here, heat it all up, you know, that was a piece, I lost a piece. Heat that all up. But at this point, um, what I will do is I will move my pasta back over. So I made my pasta ahead of time. Um, I'm gonna crank this up. And so this dish, you, you, once your pasta is cooked and you've got this beautiful starchy water here, once you've got your broccoli, your mushrooms, and your onions together, you can throw those in there. Throw those in there. Yeah, I that cook the, the cookbook bundle I put together is really was really a labor of love. I met with Lauren after she did a CNS kitchen show and I was doing the show the next week. So I called Lauren finding real, when I realized that she lived in Austin, I called her and I said, would you meet with me? And so we went to a local restaurant here. She was so sweet to meet with me. Did you go to Casa de Luz? We did. Nice. We did. Yeah. It's such, such a great restaurant. I'd never been there. Um, uh, so yeah, it was great. So what I love about this recipe, I hope I'm not sounding like I'm all over the place, but what I love about this recipe is the one thing that I did not realize was that you can use breadcrumbs to thicken up a sauce. So I have since created several recipes that are rips off of really basic peasant soups from Southern Italy 
There's a couple in the cookbook that actually use breadcrumbs to thicken it up. So once I throw all my seasonings and I've got some just traditional Italian seasonings, I'm not, um, I could have cut used fresh, but this was just easier to throw in the dried. And then I've got some, a little bit of salt, red pepper flakes, and some um, black brown pepper. So you throw all that in there and you can see it's really creamy. I'm going to increase my heat and I think I need a little bit more water in here to create a little bit more of a sauce. Um, and then you throw in your breadcrumbs and I like to throw in some parsley with that. And this is going to thicken it up. So for dinner, usually it's again, another repeat of, you know, sometimes I'll just do a baked potato with broccoli on it. Um, I always have a container of um, vegan cheese in my refrigerator. So I, this is made with, this is a nut free nacho cheese that I actually adopted from Shane in Simple. Shane has an amazing cheese, vegan um, uh, nacho cheese. And I took his recipe and I added a couple of more things into it for my tastings. And I love this. I, you can see this container. I have a container in my refrigerator all the time. And I'll put that on everything, a bean burger, um, whatever I can, you know, I'll put it on just some baked tortilla chips. I put it on everything. So you can see it's created this sauce. I don't know if you can see, it needs a little bit more water if I was serving this um, to company, but you can see, I hope you can see, there's a little bit of uh, sauce that's coming together. And if I was to cook this a little bit longer, like maybe for another five minutes, it would, um, I'm gonna turn this off. It would uh, thicken up a little bit, but I'm just gonna plate this for you because we just have a few moments left and So I'm just gonna, oh, I lost one. Plate that up. And you can see the sauce is just, I'm gonna try to, can you see that sauce? It would get a little bit thicker as this sits for like two or three minutes. This sauce will thicken up, the breadcrumbs will thicken that up. Um, and this serves, I mean, if I only made a half a pound of pasta, but you could, um, you can serve four people with this recipe easily. and. I think it's really, I'm going to throw some parsley on top and dinner is ready. And really it's about 20 minutes with chopping. I think if you have everything kind of like set around and prepped um, and it's really, really delicious. And Donna, you that looks, that looks amazing actually. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I this is one of my go-tos. I'll make a, a, a thing of, um, or, um, you know, a pasta dish on a, on a given night. I'll I'll separate it and I'll put chicken in half of it for my husband in a different pan. And then I'll eat this and he'll have this with some chicken in it. And so, you know, the, my days of being a shorter cook are gone. And he's really happy to eat what I'm eating because he's he's much healthier than I am actually. He runs five miles a day. I don't even know mm -hmm. what that works. Yeah. I've been noticing you have some cute towels hanging on your refrigerator handle. What do those say? Oh, some... It's funny. Yeah, this is, um, I got this when I retired. So I retired last year in March. March, I'll be retired a year now. So I got this from a friend about retiring. Behind every retired man is a, a wife wishing he would go back to work. So, because my husband retired before I did. Um, and then the other one, was from my adorable daughter-in-law's mom. And it was a sweet potato casserole towel. It's so cute. That is, I, I love, I have a friend and she, if she hasn't, she's, she's too shy to come on the show, but she does hand embroider like that. And I always notice that that's so cool. Do you do anything in the plant-based world? Do you teach classes? Are there ways for people to connect with you either virtually or in person? And if so, tell us how. Yeah, so I am a Food for Life instructor and I will teach, I do teach classes for free. I usually post them out on Eventbrite. I do have a website under plantifulfair.com. I would love it if you would follow me on Instagram because I would love to grow my following there. I'm not big into social media. I typically spend time on Facebook because I have a plant pure community pod that I need. 
Um, and so I have a Plentiful Fair Facebook, I have Plentiful Fair Instagram, and then my website. And I've really just been focusing on those three things because I I'm retired and I want to have fun with it. And I don't want to follow the clicks. I don't want to chase clicks. <laughs> so I have um, an idea. Instead of chasing clicks, chase licks. Oh, because your food is so delicious. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Well, thank you for being in the bundle. Just one last question. Other than your wonderful offering, what is there something else that you really uh, want to dive into in the bundle? Um, I just, I loved Debbie's items and, um, there was another, oh gosh, her name's Rachel. Rachel's cookbooks are amazing. Yeah, she has seven books. Rachel Detroit was on the show earlier with Lebanese food. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I hope this is the beginning of a, what was that saying in Casablanca? May this be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I, I hope so. I would love that. All right. Thank you so much, Donna. Oh, bye now. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in 25 minutes for Stacey Heine. She's going to take you through some recipes for a raw detox and for weight loss. Take care.